Now, what is your role as the Montessori guide in terms of the sensorial material? For one, you've really got to be thorough with your presentations. With the sensorial material, there are very specific ways that we hold the material. There are very specific ways that we carry them. There are very, very specific steps to how we present this material so that the learning goes deep, so that the concept that lies within this material gets internalized for the child. So that's really important for you. These presentations are done in silence. So it's important for the teacher to later on follow up these presentations with what we call a three-period lesson. Now, if you don't already know what a three-period lesson is, again, we have some great videos on that. I will link it for you and put it in the description box so that you can watch the video. And when we do this three-period lesson, the children will be able to learn and enrich their vocabulary with words like long and short, broad and narrow, big and small, loud and soft, it, you know, really, really gives them a wide range of vocabulary. Another one of our responsibilities is to nurture creativity through the materials. A lot of people have this misconception that Montessori does not encourage creativity. I cannot even begin to explain to you the ways that I have seen children use the sensorial material. I've been in this field for 20 years and till today, I will see children build some kind of a stru structure combining these materials that I've never seen before in a way that I couldn't even imagine that they would do. And when they do this, it's mind blowing. It's so beautiful. Many teachers have this, um, you know, this feeling that if I presented the, the tower to be built this way, that's the only way the material can be used. No way. How are we teaching children to be innovative or to think out of the box if we tell them there's only one way to build the pink tower? We've got to allow them to explore, to combine the materials, to create. They have so many ideas and they want to exercise, you know, those, the, the things that they have in their minds. They want to put it out there. But if we're not there, you know, nurturing that and encouraging, encouraging them to do that, it's not going to happen. If we're going to be that strict person that, no, you can't use the material this way, put it back and you can only use it the way I showed you. That's not true of Montessori. They can combine two, three, four materials, build structures that they have envisioned in their minds. As long as they are not being harmful to the material, the environment, or their friends and they return the material the way they found it. Those are the things that we have to maintain and they, they are able to use it the way they want. I've seen children build little structures with you know, maybe a fence and they may take the animals from the culture and put them inside and then they'll make the animals have conversations with each other. And some teachers feel that, no, how can they be doing that? They shouldn't be combining materials from different areas. It's fine as long as they return it and they are being respectful with, with the material, it shouldn't be a problem at all. Keep in mind that some children, you know, it doesn't come to them immediately to create something new or to be a bit uh, adventurous with the material. And in that case, as a teacher, as a Montessori guide, you can, you know, kind of bring it out in them and suggest to them, hey, do you think you can uh, make a Christmas tree using these materials. Do you think you can combine the pink tower and the broad stair? What can you make and show me something new? Kind of edge them towards it and then they will take off on their own. So be aware of those children. Don't let them get left behind and get them into also being creative and uh, inventive with the material. 